Hi, my name is Jasen Mikhailov, and in this short video, I will present to you a typical measurement task easily accomplished with the second generation of the Rodenschwarz ZMB vector network analyzers. The new Rodenschwarz ZMB vector network analyzer offers solid RF performance for your everyday needs. Whether your task is measuring cables, filters, mixers, or amplifiers, the new Rodenschwarz ZMB family with its power levels up to 15 dBm, high dynamic range, and the stability of a high-end VNA is the right choice. Today, I will demonstrate and hopefully convince you that the Rodenschwarz ZMB is the choice for you. I will measure a duplexer from Katrain, now Ericsson. The duplexer covers the following bands, 1710 to 1785 MHz, and 1805 to, to 1880 MHz. I will calibrate the setup using the Rodenschwarz ZNZ51 automatic calibration unit. And we will begin the measurement with a preset. I will configure the measurement as follows. Start frequency at 1.5 GHz. Stop frequency at 2 GHz. At this point, because the default is the S21 trace, and I have connected the duplexer low band to port 1, antenna to port 2, high band to port 4, we will see on the screen the low band, but we would like to see both bands as well. So I will simply add another trace to the screen, as, and because I have connected the high band to port 4, I will select S24. Now we see both bands. I will auto scale the entire diagram and we see both traces on the screen. However, we still see a lot of noise in the band reject regions. I will adjust my measurement by adding some power to maximize the signal to noise ratio and selecting a lower IF bandwidth. These two additional settings, as you see, do not affect my measurement speed. If we would like to focus more on the out-of-band regions, we need to add two more traces. I will accomplish this task by copying the existing channel, so select Channel Config, then copy Channel and Diagram, and by using the Trace Config Trace Manager, I will simply assign the last trace to a new channel and I will select a new diagram. Now we have the following display on the screen. Let's move this trace down here so that we have both bands on the, in the up area and we have the low band and the high band in the lower area. At this point, let's add some markers these markers will help us later on set up a segmented sweep. The segmented sweep will help us optimize the measurement setup for the band reject region. So I will select the low band and add a marker here and I will simply drag the marker to where I want it to be. Then I will select the high band region and I will also add a marker here. Marker and I will add the marker to uh, drag it also to where I want it to be, which is right about here. If you cannot do it by finger, I just use the knob. At this point, we're ready to set up the segmented sweep. So I will go back to the low band, go to sweep, sweep type, and select Define Segments. I will add a segment here and notice how the instrument automatically selects the desired frequency range. For the stop frequency, I will use my marker to set the frequency. That was one of the reasons why we added the markers. I will click on Display Columns and add two more columns, Power and Measurement Bandwidth. In a minute, I'll tell you why I need those uh, two columns. I will add another segment and select the stop frequency to 2 GHz. So for the bandpass region, 
I would like to look at the ripple, maybe I need a bit more information, so we'll keep the number of points to 201. But, because I'm in the band pass, I'd like to prevent compression to my receivers, here I would lower the power to 0 dBm, and keep the bandwidth at 1 kHz. For the band reject regions, I don't need so many points, so I will select 101 points, which at the same time allows me to have enough resolution to see what's happening, and I will keep the power at 10 dBm to maximize my signal-to-noise ratio. However, because I would like to prevent noise getting into my receivers and improve my signal-to-noise ratio, I will decrease the bandwidth to, let's say, 100 Hz should be enough. With this, I have completed this channel. And here now we see, if we autoscale this diagram, we see we have enough signal-to-noise ratio and a very stable measurement in the band, re band reject region as well. We go to the high band and we go through the same process, select sweep, sweep type, define segments. Let's keep in mind that this is the high band, so our band reject is on the left side. So we will again add some uh, segments. We use the marker here and we'll add the additional display columns for power and measurement bandwidth. Close and we add the second segment as well. And here we stop it at 2 GHz as well. So we mentioned that the band reject is on the left, so this is the first region. Here we will decrease the number of points to 101. We'll keep the power, but we decrease the bandwidth to 100 Hz. For the band pass, we keep the number of points and the bandwidth, but we decrease the power. Select OK. And we have a very stable measurement. Let's scale this diagram as well. And now we have the high band, the low band, both bands together. And we're ready to calibrate. So I will disconnect the duplexer and will connect the automatic calibration unit. We have a four port calibration unit, which makes it very easy and convenient to calibrate a three port setup. Yeah, we'll use the torque wrench to disconnect the cables. Always use proper connector care. Do not rotate the cable itself. It doesn't really matter how we connect the automatic calibration unit. There is a feature called detect port assignment. The unit will automatically detect these port of sports. And uh, we'll continue with the measurement. So here I'm on purpose connecting port 4 to, of the calibration unit to port 2 of the analyzer. Because this is more convenient in this case. Use the torque wrench. I will connect port 4 of the analyzer to port 2 of the automatic calibration unit. Proper connector practice and torquing is essential to achieve maximum accuracy. We select Cal from the hard keys, start Cal with unit, and here's the option, calibrate active channel, and there's a very convenient option, calibrate all channels. Since we have three channels, I will select this option, select OK, and now the instrument is giving me a warning. Port 4 is missing from the calibration. Very easy, add port 4, select next, and uh, we click then the detect port assignment. We're ready to go, move to the next step. At this point, I will select start the calibration sweep, and we wait until the calibration is finished, which will take a few minutes, a seconds, a few moments. So depending on the, on the complexity of the measurement setup, the calibration can take longer or shorter. In our case, calibration is complete. 
I will click on apply and we'll reconnect back the duplexer. Again, for optimum results, use proper connector care. There's a fantastic presentation from Rod and Schwartz. And never rotate the cable itself. After we have properly connected our duplexer, making sure that we connect the correct band to the correct test ports, in this case low band to port 1, antenna to port 2, and high band to port 4, we have the measurement results. This would complete a measurement setup, but what if we wanted to see how well our, our duplexer ports are matched? In this case, I will select the first channel, simply add a trace to that channel, but select a different display area, and for the antenna port match, I'll select S22, looks great. I will add another trace to the same. Display area, select S44 for the high band, and a third trace, and select S11 for the low band. This completes our measurement. This concludes the short video showcasing some of the useful features of the second generation of the Rodenschwarz ZMB vector network analyzers. I hope I was able to demonstrate how easy and accurately you can accomplish your measurement tasks. Thank you for watching.